You are listening to the Winner's Ways podcast with Bola Alabi, episode number 85. Would you like to win and achieve success at what you do? Welcome to the Winner's Ways podcast, where we create winners every day. And now your host, the author of Winner's Ways book and life coach, Bola Alabi. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Winner's Ways podcast where we talk about your career, your money and we also give you life motivation so that you can live your life to the fullest. We have a guest on the show today and I'll be speaking with Sari Ibrahim. He's a financial planner and member of the Bank on Yourself organization. He helps real estate investors, business owners, and full-time employees grow safe and predictable wealth, regardless of market conditions and on a tax-favored basis. I'm eager to learn how you can accomplish this, you know, to grow your money on a tax-favored basis, regardless of the market condition. So to all my audience, I know you are going to learn a thing or two from Sari as we speak with him today. So let's get on to it. Hey, Sari, uh, can you briefly introduce yourself to my audience? Yeah, Hi, Bola. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Um, so I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I was born and raised here, lived here my whole life. I still do live here with my wife and I'm a financial planner. I've been in this industry uh, alongside with insurance and and financial services for the last five years. I started in this industry uh, in 2015 while I was in the middle of my graduate program. I was doing my master's degree in business with a concentration in project management. So I stumbled across, I started working for Allstate Insurance, and and then I kind of merged into the healthcare world where I was a Medicare consultant. I worked with companies like Blue Cross Blue Shield, Humana, Cigna HealthSpring. And then it was one of those clients at that time who kind of asked me, um, I started to build a relationship with these clients. And one of them asked me, he's like, hey, Sari, uh, can you help me with uh, life insurance? I'm interested in something that has cash value and it builds up over time. And I had no idea what he was talking about. So, but it kind of triggered something in my brain. I was like, what if I could, you know, what if this is true? What if there is some sort of whole life policy that has cash value that builds up over time that you could use? So I started to do research on this and I went to Amazon and because I wanted a lot of information. I wanted to get as much information as I can. And I went to Amazon and I, and I searched for books about life insurance and this book that came up called The Bank on Yourself Revolution by Pamela Ellen. And the book pretty much talks about using cash value life insurance, but mainly for the living benefits and for, for you to essentially save your money and to become your own banker, hence the title Bank on Yourself. Uh, and this also led me to another book which I think you've read so far, um, Becoming Your Own Banker by Nelson Nash. Both are tremendous books. And these two books kind of opened up my eyes, not only as an advisor, as a consultant, but also as, as a client. So I ended up buying my own policy. I participated in one of these whole life policies. I own my own policy now. And then I went through the Bank on Yourself training program. It's like an eight-week rigorous training program. Um, and I got my uh, certification through them. So now I went through the, I'm a Bank on Yourself professional and now I, I, then I founded the company Financial Asset Protection, and our primary niche is using this concept, the bank on yourself concept, also known as the infinite banking concept. Great. So thank you very much for that intro. I think we have some things in common here, Sari. Whenever I get any new information, I'll do the same thing exactly as you did. I'll go around, talk about it, learn about it. Uh, read about it. And I think uh, that was what you did with uh, Bank on Yourself. And in my opinion, it's thrilling uh, not only to bank on yourself, but I think it's also rewarding. And I really want to learn more from you. And you mentioned that there is a training program for uh, becoming your home banker. And, And we are going to get to that because I know uh, my audience, they would like to know more about that. But 
let me ask you, uh, you talked about cash value life insurance. I have a term life insurance and, um, and I did this because, you know, listening to financial experts, they told me that time, term life insurance is better than the old life insurance. Can you uh, briefly explain the difference between the two? Yeah, yeah. For, yeah, I'll, I'll start by explaining the differences. So term is pretty much for a set period of time. It's either 10 years, 20 years or 30 years. And it, it's only life insurance. There is no equity or cash value in the policy. So for example, uh, one may get a whole life, a term policy and uh, pay like $50 a month for depending on the age for like, let's say a million dollars in life insurance coverage. And let's say they do so for 10 years. So they pay $50 a month for 10 years. If something happens to them within that 10 year period, their beneficiary would get a million dollars. If, if they live through that 10 year period, which 90, over 99% of the time, that's what happens. Um, if they do live past that 10 year period, then they've just paid $50 a month. It went to the insurance company and the insurance company doesn't pay them anything back. There's no cash value. There's no equity. And the insurance company is not on the hook anymore to insure them. If they want to renew it, they could renew it. Uh, term term is not bad. That's just explanation of it. Whole life is just like the title. It's for your whole life. It's a permanent form of life insurance. Uh, there's only a couple ways that it could it could cancel or end the policy. One is if you stop making payments to it, and the second is if you pass away. Um, it, there's no really expiration date on the whole life policy. It's, it it keeps going, uh, and the second difference is it has cash value or it has equity in the policy that you build up over time. Like the same thing with buying a home. When you buy a home, you have the market value and you have the equity. So same thing in, with whole life policies. Um, and, and then as far as to go and, and state that, you know, one over is better than the other is, is a stretch. You know, it's, it's, um, it's, that's not usually how it works. It's, it's a specific situation for specific purposes. I've worked on many cases where I, I help clients with both term and whole life. The term, because they want a high death benefit in case something happens to them. And the whole life is to build the equity and to build cash and to become your own banker. So they both have their purposes and functions. You know, Now, in terms of the infinite banking concept and the bank on yourself concept, you can't use term life insurance for that because there is no cash value. There's no equity. So it's, it's impossible to use it for that purpose. It would have to be whole life insurance because of the, the cash value buildup. Uh, so pretty much, you know, uh, a lot of advisors might say, you know, stay away from whole life insurance because uh, low cash returns uh, and you have to borrow your money and pay interest on it. So they would say do term and then invest the, the rest. And, and I'm, I don't want to argue and say, you know, that what option A is you know, worse or, or better than option B, but rather I want the, the, the clients or the audience to know like what's what exactly is going on here. So, again, we, we've said the differences between term and whole life insurance. Now, as far as what people think about traditional whole life insurance, there's a big miscommunication, a big stretch. Uh, so a lot of people know traditional whole life insurance based off of what like Susie Orman or Dave Ramsey would say or other financial gurus that, you know, it's very low returns, tiny returns, and you have to pay interest on your money and you can get much more insurance for a fraction of the cost. And that is true. It, that's when you position it that way, that's true. But there's different types of whole life insurance through different companies and different funding amounts. It's like saying if I if if I built a house, right, and mm. you wanted the house to be four thousand square feet, and we put four thousand square feet all in the basement and the foundation, it's still a four thousand square feet home, right? It's just all in the base. It's, it's inefficient. The home, it's all going to be underground essentially. You know, so same thing with traditional whole life insurance. It's actually life insurance, but the way it's structured a hundred years ago or, or the traditional forms is that it gives you very little returns because that's the way it's structured. However, with the infinite banking concept or the bank on yourself concept, we'll take those same dollars that clients are putting in, but structure the policy differently. Instead of putting it all the money towards the base of the policy or towards the life insurance amount, we would kind of separate it. So that way half of the money going in, about half the money is going in, is going in towards the life insurance and the other half is going in towards the cash value. And the more we can fund towards the cash value, the more dividends and interest we can earn. So back to the example about the home and being you know, 4,000 square feet, instead of doing all 4,000 square feet in the basement or the foundation, we can separate that night to 2,000 in the base and then 2,000 above or even separate it into four ways where it's four floors, but still 4,000 square feet. So in other words, it's not, you know, that's just the title of a whole life, nor is it the quantity of the premiums, but how it's positioned, positioned, how it's structured. That's what makes a difference. And most financial advisors and accountants and lawyers have no idea uh, what the infinite banking concept is. So as soon as they hear whole life insurance, they say, stay away. 
And I would agree with them. In certain situations, you should stay away from whole life insurance if it is traditional whole life insurance. But if it's the bank on yourself way or the infinite banking concept way, then um, uh, it's completely different than what people talk about. We're talking about efficient. We're talking about high early cash value and we're talking about liquidity. Okay. Uh, I think that's a great explanation. Based on what you just explained, um, I think the infinite banking concepts is combining the opportunity of uh, getting dividend like investments plus uh, the peace of mind that you are going to get uh, if you have an insurance. So that's uh, a great way uh, actually to save, invest, and also make sure you are protecting your loved ones. So that's great. Now, let me ask you, mm-hmm. can anyone become a banker? Of their, Can anyone bank on themselves? Like if I want to do it right now, what does it take for me to start? Yeah, so pretty much what we we do is we would do a full, thorough, sixty to ninety minute financial analysis, where we we sit, we talk. It's also mostly done virtually, so we we'll talk over Zoom or over the phone. We'll do a sixty to ninety minute uh, analysis. I'll go through like current cash flow, budget, uh, income, need, financial needs, financial wants, goals, retirement goals. You know, college savings for kids, uh, current four hundred one ks, IRAs. Like pretty much a full overview, a thirty thousand foot, foot overview of all their financial situation. And then after that, we pretty much take that data, the information, and then we build out a bank on yourself policy or a whole life policy based on those specific needs and want. Because we work with primarily, we work with three insurance companies and each insurance company has different funding amounts, different products, you know? So it's almost impossible for us to guess which company and which product to use. So the analysis helps us narrow down based on the specific situation of the client. It helps us narrow down, you know, the appropriate product and appropriate plan. And then from there, there's something called, you know, the, the underwriting process. In most situations, uh, since we are talking about life insurance, the client would have to we'd submit the application it go to the insurance company. And then there's about four to six weeks of medical underwriting where there's a medical exam and the insurance company would have to do their due diligence, make sure the client is insurable. And then also there's also some financial underwriting involved too, where they would make sure like, like for example, If somebody makes $20,000 a year and they want to buy $20 million of life insurance, the insurance company won't allow that because they'll say, you know, why do you need that much insurance if you're only making $20,000 a year to, to cover you in case something happens to you, number one. And number two, if you're going to get $20 million of life insurance, the premiums might be $200,000 a year. How could you pay $200,000 a year if you're making $20,000 a year? So in other words, there's some sort of financial logic involved or, or math involved with these policies. And, and typically that happens not so much on like, if it's a policy that's like a thousand dollars a month, you know, that's not really going to happen, but we do have clients that put in like a hundred thousand dollars or for, or for 10 years in that situation, the, the insurance company's got to want to know, you know, where's this money coming from? What purpose is it for? And things like that. So a financial aspect along with medical underwriting that takes about four to six weeks. And then after that, the policy is approved. And then after it's approved, now you can start funding it. You could start funding the policy depending on how it's structured annually, or monthly, or in some situations, we have, we have policies that are single premium, where it's like a one-time transaction, one-time payment that goes into the policy and you pay it up the policy for the, you know, forever. It's like buying a house cash. You just pay it up and you get out of the way. Great. So do all insurance companies, do they offer this cash value uh, banking uh, since then? Or I know you say you work with three insurance companies, but- I'm assuming all insurance companies should also have these uh, features or uh, package. Yeah, good question. So there's a reason why it's only three. Um, so there's a couple of things that have to be taken into consideration in order for you to implement the infinite banking concept or the bank on yourself concept. So number one, it has to be whole life insurance. It can't be term or universal. It has to be whole life insurance. That's the first thing. Uh, and then the second thing is, is that it has to be from a mutually owned insurance company and not a stock owned insurance company. So a mutually owned insurance company gives, gives their dividends and profits back to the policy owners, to the consumers, whereas um, a stock owned insurance company would give their dividends or profits back to the shareholders. So it has to be mutually owned. And the third thing is there has to be something called the paid up additions rider. This is the part of the policy that builds up cash value over time and turbocharges the cash value. 
And not all insurance companies offer the paid up additions rider. So you have to make sure that this insurance company is a whole life. It's a whole life product. It's mutually owned. And there's a paid up additions rider that you could use to build up the cash value in the whole life policy. And then the fourth aspect of it is it has to be from something called non-direct recognition uh, as opposed to direct recognition. Now, what this means is the insurance company will pay you dividends and interest on your money, even when you're using it. For example, let's say you've built up a whole life policy from a mutual insurance company. Uh, You've been paying into it for some years, and now you have like $100,000 in cash value. And now let's say you needed to borrow like $50,000 from the policy. You can go to the insurance company, borrow $50,000 from the insurance company, and then now you have this loan agreement between, it's like a personal loan between you and the insurance company, but your $100,000 cash value is still growing and still compounding as if you've never touched it. That is non-direct recognition. They're not recognizing the fact that you have an outstanding loan and they're, and they're paying you dividends and interest as if you've never touched that money. And that's what you want for the infinite banking. That's, that's one of the reasons why it's called infinite banking is because you can keep doing this over and over without inter- in- interrupting the growth of your money. Now, of course, if it's direct recognition, then they would reduce the dividends and interest based on the fact that you have an outstanding loan. So it has to be whole life, mutually owned, the paid up additions rider has to be there, and it has to be non-direct recognition. And out of like over a thousand life insurance companies in the United States, this narrows it down to only three. And sometimes we work with the fourth one sometimes, but it's mostly three that could do all these things. So who are those three companies? Do you mind telling us? Yeah, absolutely. So one of them is Lafayette Insurance Company. The other one is Forrester's Financial. And the third one is Security Mutual. And sometimes we use Mass Mutual, but it's mostly the first three, Lafayette, Security Mutual, and Forrester's Financial. And these companies have been around for over 160 years. They've been paying dividends to the policy owners for oh, during that time. They've even, they've even been paying dividends and, and compound interest to the policy owners you know, regardless of market conditions, even during the Great Depression, during the 2008 market crash, and even right now with all the uncertainties of the pandemic, they're still paying dividends. Now, although there's pretty much two ways the cash value can grow in the policy, one way is through dividends and the other way is through compound interest. The compound interest is guaranteed it's in writing. With the illustration where you see the breakdown of the numbers, it's guaranteed that that's how much you'll get over a set period of time. The dividends aren't guaranteed. However, as mentioned, we've only worked, we've worked with insurance companies the ones listed who have been around for over 160 years and have been paying these dividends. Wow. So I I like the fact that uh, these insurance companies, they have long track record, but uh, we we also know that uh, there are some risks. And I want to also talk about those risks. I'll give you an example. Uh, If I invest in a, maybe any company, uh, maybe a mutual fund for that matter, during this uh, market volatility, especially with the pandemic that is going on right now, some of the companies that I invest in, some of them, they cut their dividend. So what are the risks associated with banking on yourself that you know of and that you want to share with us? Yeah, so I, I hate to use this word, but uh, there essentially is no risk because, and I'll explain why, that there is no risk with the policies is because the insurance companies are highly regulated. On a federal and state level, they're highly regulated. They could only do certain things with their money that they take in as premium dollars. They, about 60 to 80% is in the bond market. And then about 20 to 40% is in private loans that they charge interest on. So typically when markets take a, a downturn or take a fall, um, insurance companies aren't losing with those downturns because their money is not invested there and because they can't invest in the stock market or other speculative investments. So during these uncertain times, insurance companies are still have positive returns because of where they're invested and, and what they're doing with that money and what they've been doing with that money for over 160 years. So essentially there is, there's no risk involved. Like you'll never have a whole life policy and the cash value will be decreased because of market market trends or market conditions or other risks involved, other external risks. However, it's not too good to be true. There's some things to consider with whole life insurance and building up the cash value. Uh, number one, there is a capitalization period, a period of time where you have to build up the policy and, and with that, just like anything else, there are fees involved. And typically with whole life insurance, the fees are going to be the highest in the first two years. After that, the policy will eventually start to compound and you start to earn more in the policy than you're paying into it. That's one thing to consider. So in other words, you can't put $10,000 into a whole life policy and then borrow $50,000. 
you can only borrow up to 90% of your current cash value based on what it's, what it's accumulated at. And again, the first two years, that's when the fees are the highest. But of course, over time and compound interest, the policy will eventually pay for itself and compound you know, plus more on a tax favored basis. And another thing to consider too is when you go to use the policy loans, you have to pay those back. Uh, if, you don't pay the, if you don't pay the policy loans back, the policy could lapse. And you could lose the policy and everything in it. So uh, pretty much you need to capitalize the policy. And also when you borrow, you need to pay it back. We have calculators that we use and, and tools to show clients like if they wanted to borrow, what's the maximum time they're allowed to pay it back depending on the situation. And also if they wanted to pay back in the shortest period of time. So there's different ways to maneuver and structure these, these loans, but that's just some things to consider. Oh, great. So uh, when you talk about um, motivation, you know, when we talk about money and, you know, sitting here, I'm just wondering what motivates you to go into this uh, type of business, uh, banking on yourself why why do you think it's this is important and why are you i know you've been talking about this you are trying to help more people why do you do that yeah absolutely so what while i was in grad school um you know i i started to kind of like have this different way of thinking you know after taking courses in accounting and economics and finance and all these things and and, and i kind of like had this this breakthrough moment where i was like you know business this is all just like, this is all obvious important content or context, but rather, you know, business is, is a simple thing. And if you ask me, what is business? What's the definition of business? I would say it's problem solving. It's filling in the gaps for people, filling in their needs and wants, and then being paid to do so. Uh, and the bigger the problem, the bigger the paycheck. You know, uh, why do doctors make so much money and lawyers make so much money is because they're solving very big problems, plain and simple. So this right here started to open up like my eyes and I jumped into this industry, not because, you know, I love life insurance so much, or I love the infinite banking concept so much. These are just tools. It's rather that I love problem solving so much. And if I can guarantee somebody a solution, then I'll jump all over it. You know, if I could show somebody how they can earn compound interest over time, regardless of market conditions, I'll do that. And also if I could show somebody that building up the policy and, and earning these dividends and compound cash. If something happens in the stock market, I'll never receive a call, you know? Hey, Sari, why did you do this policy for me? The, the stock market dropped. I lost 50% of my money. That would never happen with these policies. I could have got into mutual funds and other investments like that, but I knew that I would have to answer to those clients and, and answer, answer to those situations, you know, because those aren't guaranteed risks or guaranteed returns. What this it is. And again, it's not just necessarily I love life insurance so much and or the infinite banking. It's rather I love the tool and, and solving problems and helping people and being able to literally give somebody an illustration and sign my name on it that says, this is what's going to happen. You know, here's my signature on it too. Well, okay. I, I like that. Sign your name on it. And, you know, you've been talking about compound interest and I, I do invest in the stock market. Um I invest in mutual funds, and I know that uh, the stock market, at least here in the U.S., they, they also have it also has its own um, long, solid track record, uh, maybe 80 years or more, and uh, you can get returns of about at least 10% uh, on average uh, per year. So, with uh, the concept of in, uh, infinite banking. What is the typical uh, rate of return uh, when you talk about compound interest? Do you have any idea? Yeah, I love this question. Yeah, so pretty much there's pretty, as mentioned, there's two ways that the policy grows. It earns dividends and it earns compound interest. And then both, of course, both of those together, of course, have a compounding effect. So pretty much on average, we're seeing around 4 to 5% every year compounded. But here's the thing to, to consider is that it's not either or. It's not either I put my money in the stock market and I earn 10% or I put it into whole life insurance and I earn 5%. This is a way for you to do both. For example, you can fund the policy, build up the cash value, and then from there, borrow from the cash value, buy the stocks you want, invest in real estate, invest wherever you want, and then pretty much finance your own investments, finance your own stocks, finance your own properties, and do so all this with while you are in control of your of your money and control of the terms of those loans too. So that's what I think this is all about. You know, not necessarily like 
you know, you're in a store and you want to buy a product and you're reading the, the ingredients of the product, which one is the best for you? Rather, it's integration. It's how do I use this to do more than one thing? How do I solve, you know, all my money problems with one tool where it's like a, a hinge on a door where it just connects you to the next thing? That's what I think. And that's what I love about this is that it's not either or, it's both. And you could use it in, in various ways and multiple in, in multiple ways, including investing in the stock market to earn 10%, you know, but if the, if, if the stocks you've invested in take a downturn, you still have the whole life policy and you still have a compounding over time. And, and believe it or not, this is exactly what banks do. Banks have billions of dollars in whole life insurance. They earn compound interest and dividends on those billions of dollars. And then when they want to loan out money to consumers, to clients via, um, you know, credit cards, lines of credit, mortgages, things like that, they use the policy, they borrow from the policy and then they loan it out. They earn interest from the from the clients, and they still keep earning interest in their in their whole life policy. So their money is doing two things for them at the same time. And I think that's important. Is you want to think like a bank, you know, not just like one place to put your money, but numerous places to put your money to have a compounding effect on it. That's awesome. I I, I like what you said. Think like a bank. And the book that you shared with me, uh, mm-hmm. "Becoming Your Own Banker" by Nelson Nash. I think it did it great job explaining uh, how to think like a bank. And I like the way he explained how to build uh, generational wealth. Uh, I don't know if you know about it. Let's say for me, for example, if I buy uh, the whole life insurance with cash value for my own children, and I, I encourage them to buy for their children as well, that way, I think, based on this book, you can uh, build generational wealth. Can you explain how we can use the concept of infinite banking to build generational wealth? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So there's you know, many different ways, especially with estate planning and, and, different, and different ways like that. There's many different ways. But one specific way, an example, I actually just worked on a client with this. And his granddaughter was born in August, and he got a whole life policy for her. He's the owner of the policy and pays for the policy. And he's putting in about $300 per month into the policy. And the math is phenomenal phenomenal behind this because of the compound interest at a young age. So for example, and we have this in the illustration um, shown that if, if he puts in $300 per month for 20 years, up until the granddaughter is 20 years old, he would have put in a total of $72,000 over that 20 year period. So in other words, $3,600 a year times 20 years would be $72,000 paid in. Uh, and the policy now would be, it would only be set for 20 years. No more further contributions are needed to fund the policy, but it's still, it's for her whole life now. It's going to stay until, you know, her whole life, it's going to be there, but no more contributions are required. And then if we looked at by age, if she kept the policy and of course doesn't have to pay into it anymore, by age 65, she'll have $1.7 million in cash value, and then a life insurance amount of like $3 million, but with only twenty, with only $72,000 put into it. So think about it that way. Think about how much it compounded over and over every single year without any more money put into it. So that's one angle there. And the second angle too is she could borrow this money and use for college instead of going to a third a third party lender or Sally May or the Department of Education for a loan. She can go to the policy and borrow from the policy to use for college savings and then pay it back. And she can constantly become her own baker, like just borrowing and paying back, borrowing, paying back for the rest of her life, never having to go through under financial underwriting to borrow. There is no financial underwriting and borrowing. You never have to qualify for a loan. You know, there's no credit checks. It's not on your credit history. It's, it's all, it's literally privatized banking or family banking, and you're in control of everything. And this also becomes like a process over result kind of mentality where it's not necessarily what you're getting out of it, but also the, the process of doing all this is how the family is thinking like bankers. They're thinking about how to keep the, the money in the family and how to keep it compounding and how to keep it accessible at all times. Wow. That's, that's awesome. So, uh, do you want to tell us about how to take control of our money? You know, you are a financial expert. How can people, you know, pay themselves first, live with, within their means and take control of their money? Yeah, it all starts with the mindset. You know, 
thinking like a bank, thinking like a large corporation. You're thinking, how can I, you know, from, from the money you take in one hand and then you spend it in the other hand, which most of us do very, very often, about 60% of Americans don't even have a thousand dollars in a bank account. You know, it's because we spend so much money and, you know, pretty much from, from every dollar you take in one hand, you know, before you spend it, put it in through a financial vehicle that you could take the money out on the other side of it and then pay whatever you have to pay with that, either your bills or your vacation or clothes or whatever it is that you want to buy, but make it go through a financial vehicle like whole life insurance. You could, you could fund the policy, build up the cash value in it, and then pretty much every dollar you're earning goes through the policy and out the other end of it. Because this way, you, you're feeding a machine that's going to give you compound interest over time. So the key is if you could, you know, um, if, if more money on more money equals like more money, the compounding effect, you know, so the, the key to that would be to fill in as most money, as more, as most money as you possibly can. I know it's kind of tricky to think about it that way, but you know, if something is giving you compound interest, it would make more sense to give that machine as much money as possible. So that way you can get the most out of it. And, and it's not necessarily like, you know, you have to afford one of these, you know, I started my first policy with $300 per month. And I was putting money in and then taking money out on the other side of it and then using that to pay down credit card debt, using that to build my business. And then eventually, one thing I noticed is I, I always had the cash value growing no matter what. It was always growing. I was paying back the loans and paying the premiums on it, but it was always compounding and always growing. And I think everybody should do this. You know, It's not something for the wealthy only, even though the wealthy use this. It's not only for the, it's not exclusive to wealthy people. It's almost like saying, you know, in order to go to the gym, you have to be in shape before you go to the gym, but you go to the gym to become, to get into shape. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So the same thing with this is not, you don't use this when you are wealthy, you use this to become wealthy. Wow. Wow. That's, that's good. That's good. So uh, if people want to sign up uh, for the inter, uh, infinite banking concept, if they want to sign up for cash value life insurance, how can they reach out to you? Yeah, they can go to my website. It's finassetprotection.com, F-I-N, assetprotection.com. And then there you can schedule a free appointment. And most of my appointments are virtual. So we can jump on Zoom or over the phone. And uh, if you reach out, I will send you a free copy of the Bank on Yourself Revolution book by Pamela Yellen. Uh, It's like $15 on Kindle. But if you reach out and you say you came from this podcast, I will send you the book for free via Kindle. Okay, that's awesome. So I'm going to put... Uh, I need a phone call um, to my insurance company and I got oh, it. That's the website. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I, I went to your website. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'm going to put your website on my on the show notes uh, so that people can go there and uh, reach out to you uh, so that they can learn more and participate in this uh, infinite banking concept so that people can build wealth because that's what we are about here at uh, Winners Ways to help people to take control of their money so that they will not have to worry too much about money. And uh, Sari, thank you very much for your time today. Thanks for all the great information that you've shared with uh, my audience. And I'm sure uh, this is going to be beneficial And I'm going to reach out to you as well to learn more and see how I can uh, take you, make use of this opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Please do reach out anytime. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. This episode of Winner's Ways podcast has come to a close. We hope you enjoy and learn something from today's show. We want you to win and excel in all areas of your life. And we regularly explore and share information with our listeners to empower them to win. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast for more tips and strategies to help you find the success that you've always dreamt of. And don't forget to rate and review so that we can continue to bring you more podcast episodes to empower you. We will love to have you again next week. Now, keep winning.